Now, it wouldn't make any sense to spend $400 on a Shure SM7B if, in a blind comparison, you could not tell the difference between the SM7B and a microphone that cost half or 25% the price of that microphone. Or in that same blind comparison, you actually preferred one of the other microphones. So this entire video is going to be a blind comparison between the Shure SM7B, the Rode Procaster, and the Rode PodMic. And in each of these segments, there's going to be a little A, B, or C label on the screen. That is going to let you know which microphone that you're listening to. And hopefully by the end of this video, you're going to have a preference for which one you think sounds the best and you just might save yourself a few hundred dollars in doing so. Now, the audio interface I'm using for this test is the Audion ID4. Now, I've chosen that interface just for this test because I think it colors the audio the least. It gives the least of its own feel or tone to the audio quality. I think it's the most transparent audio interface that I actually own. But when I come to recommending, particularly a budget audio interface, right now I'm recommending the PreSonus AudioBox Go, which is a $79 interface, and it is the least expensive interface I've ever used that actually has enough gain to drive the SM7B or the Rode Procaster. Now, the Rode PodMic can be run on a little bit lower gain level, so you might be able to get away with some other interface with that one, but at that under $100 price point, the PreSonus AudioBox Go is my top recommendation. And it actually colors the sound and gives a little bit of a sort of a warm, traditional, vintage sound that I really, really like. Now, for all of these microphones, the pricing can vary quite significantly between the different suppliers. And because of that, I have created some links in the description down below. This to allow you to click through. So you click through on SM7B. It will immediately give you a choice of B&H, Amazon, and a number of the top suppliers and allow you to instantly price check. So when it does come time to buy, you can use those links and I identify who has got the best price regardless of which microphone that you pick. I will also put down there that same type of best price link for the two audio interfaces that I'm talking about and using in this video, the Audient ID4 and my most recommended budget audio interface, the PreSonus AudioBox Go. Now looking at the size, weight, and build quality on all of these, they all weigh a ton. They feel like they would last forever. They are built like tanks. I would say if you line these three up and let anybody look at them and ask which one was the most expensive one, I think most people are probably going to pick either the SM7B or the Rode PodMic, which is the cheapest of the three microphones. I think just because of the mounting option or the way that the Procaster mounts with this sort of tiny little sort of plasticky thing on the end, that's probably the one place that it just doesn't seem quite as premium as the other ones. Having said that, that, that little mount does give you the advantage of being able to get the microphone and the boom arm further out of your face. So there is an advantage to that sort of little mounting option. I don't think anybody's going to handle any of these and think that they feel like anything except for a pro level high quality microphone. And certainly I don't think anybody is going to think that the Rode PodMic is a microphone that is 25% the price of the Shure SM7B. So when it comes to build quality, I don't think you're going to look at any of them and think that you're sort of let down. I think the cheaper options are right there and you would consider them build quality wise on par with the Shure SM7B. Now, when it comes to the mounting hardware on all three of these microphones, the two that really stand out are the Rode PodMic and the Shure SM7B. They both have really, really good mounting interfaces or mounting brackets. I actually think the cheapest one, the PodMic, has the best mounting bracket of all of them. It has the, the best knobs. It, it's just the easiest to use. I find the Shure SM7B, it looks good and it works okay, but you really have to crank those knobs down and they're kind of small and fiddly. Now, the Rode Procaster probably has the least inspiring mount. It is a plastic mount that just goes on the end of the microphone. Now, there are some advantages to this, even though it is a sort of a basic and small mount, is the fact that the way you mount the boom arm allows you to get that boom arm quite a ways away from your face. So you can really kind of have the, the microphone coming into shot and there's less of the boom arm and less of the distraction in the shot than there is with certainly with the Shure SM7B, but I would say also with the Rode PodMic as well. Now, if you look at the published frequency response graphs as well as the published frequency response range, you're going to get a kind of an idea of how you think these microphones are going to sound. But actually, when you listen to them, it doesn't actually work out the way that you would necessarily think. Now, both the SM7B and the PodMic 
take have a frequency range of 20 hertz to 20 kilohertz. Now that means they get the very highs of human hearing as well as the very lows of human hearing. And just based on that, you might think that they sound very similar, but actually they couldn't sound more different. In fact, of the three microphones in this comparison, the bare audio sounds the most different between those two microphones. Now, if you look at the Rode Procaster, that has a frequency response that starts at 75 hertz and only goes up to 18 kilohertz. So you're missing the very lowest part of human hearing and you're missing the very highest part. But when it comes to spoken word, that's kind of wasted frequencies anyways. It's an area that we really don't use or need. In addition to that, just seeing those difference in frequency response between the Rode Procaster and the Shure SM7B would think, make you think that those two microphones would sound very, very different. But actually, in this comparison, they sound very, very similar. And when I was editing the audio, I was, also, I was often getting confused about which microphone I was editing, and I have to keep going back and identify which microphone that was a recording of. Now in all the samples you've heard so far, I have used a small amount of compression and a light EQ work on them. And in microphone videos, I know it is super popular just to give you the raw audio from the microphone. The biggest problem I have with that is I don't know anybody who's trying to get the best out of their audio, whether they're spending $100 on a microphone or $400 on a microphone that is not applying some level of compression and some level of editing or EQing of their audio. So what I've done is just the most bare minimum of each to each of these microphones to make them sound how I think that they would sound the best. And the SM7B, it needs a little bit of clarity because it is a very dark mic. People often describe it as sounding like you're talking with socks in your mouth. There's, Although there's lots of people that love that mic, there's a lot of people that do not like that mic. I think the Rode Procaster is pretty good, pretty neutral, sort of right out of the box. It actually sounds like processed audio, and there's not a whole lot you need to do on that. You might look through and try to find some frequencies that sound a little bit harsh to you and cut them out. And then there is the Rode Pod mic, which benefits from a little bit of a boost in the low end, so I think it needs a little bit of a bump there. And often there are some little bit of a harsher high end frequencies that you might want to cut out or even out. But Definitely all of these mics, even the most expensive Shure SM7B, sound better when they're edited. Now I'm going to give you some sound samples of all the microphones with no compression applied, no equalization applied. I'm just going to increase the audio levels so they match up with the previous footage. I'm also going to be using the PreSonus AudioBox Go as the audio interface. And essentially what I'm demonstrating is if you have no audio processing knowledge whatsoever, and if you are not interested in improving your audio through audio processing, and you just go out and you buy the cheapest audio interface that you can find that can actually drive the uh, Rode Procaster or SM7B, this is the audio quality that you can expect. And once again, I got this, all the microphones two fists away from my mouth, and I am really begrudgingly giving you these audio samples because I know people want to hear in microphone videos what they sound like right out of the mic microphone with no processing whatsoever. But honestly, I've never seen a video where I thought the sound was really fabulous and you asked the person, they said, well, I didn't apply any post-processing. That's just not the way these microphones are used. But if you do use the microphone this way, this is how it's gonna sound. Once again, this is just pure audio coming out of the microphone, running into the PreSonus AudioBox Go, the least expensive audio interface you can buy that has the gain to drive an SM7B or Rode Procaster. All right, that's it, you've heard them all. I am really keen to know what you thought of the sound qualities out of these microphones, processed or unprocessed, just entertain me and tell me which microphone you liked the most, whether it be processed or unprocessed. Experience tells me that probably less than 1% of you will actually do this, but come on, just humor me. I've taken the time to make this video and make this blind comparison. You know, just do a little comment, A, B, C, whatever. All right, now, give you a second to do that. All right, microphone A. The microphone that I actually personally thought sounded the best was the Rode Procaster. Microphone B, which was my second pick, I think it sounded the second best to me, was the Shure SM7B. And in third place for me and microphone C was the Rode Pod Mic. If you're interested in getting the best in photo and video with the gear that you can afford or the gear that you already have and maybe save yourself from buying an SM7B that you don't even like, this is the channel for you. So be sure to subscribe to the channel and don't forget to hit that bell notification.